Alessandro Allori, Annunciation, 1577 to 1578, Oil on Panel. Evening has fallen. The room is dark. And Mary can no longer properly see what she's knitting. So the young woman gets up from her chair and puts away her knitting needles and ball of wool in the small wicker basket on the ground. It's an instant. The whole room lights up, invaded by a whirlwind of soft clouds. At the center of the source of light, a sweet dove. Then the powerful sound of a wing beat. And in front of Mary, an archangel appears. Gabriel, who holds out a branch of lilies. Smiling angels in the clouds adorn the scene with flowers. Gabriel has come to announce to Mary that she is pregnant and that she will give birth to the Son of God. Mary, confused and intimidated, lowers her gaze to the ground onto the flowers that have fallen from the sky. And the flowers? See how many they are. Alessandra Lori, the author of this work, was famous for giving his paintings an extraordinarily elegant and refined atmosphere, which was at the same time rich in natural and realistic details. Have you noticed the wonderful embroidery on the cushion? And the archangel's clothes? Not to mention the iridescence of his wings. Spectacular! But the most fascinating thing about this painting is the number of flowers in the scene, which all really exist. The lily is always present in this biblical story, and it is the flower, symbol of purity, that Gabriel offers Mary when he announces the incredible news. Now move your gaze upwards. The little angel at the top of the panel is holding a pretty bouquet, where we can recognize other, less common flowers. The viburnum, with its tiny white petals, the yellow jasmine from the east, and the tulip, a very precious flower, originally from Persia, which in the 17th century had become a real fashion, desired by everyone, and very expensive. On the clouds, there's also a sprig of broom, which blossoms and perfumes only when flooded by rays of sunlight. It's typical of the Mediterranean coasts, as well as the wonderful sea lily. Next, we recognize the daisy and the rose. So important for the Christian religion that it gives its name to the rosary, the string of beads, once really made of rosewood, with which devotees accompany their prayers. But there are also cedar flowers and lily of the valley, which blossoms right around the time of the Annunciation, March 25th, and which due to its downward facing corolla is a symbol of humility. And then there's the carnation, a symbol of love, because of its bright red color. There are even some forget-me-nots, in fact, how could we forget this incredible and heavenly flower collection? Actually, how about we make a bouquet that even a lorry would envy? Follow us!
Paper Flowers To make a beautiful bouquet of flowers, we're going to learn the art of origami. Here's what we'll need. Some 14 centimeter square sheets of origami paper in the following colors. One red, one pink, and one lilac. One white, one yellow, three green, a pencil, a glue stick, scissors, and sticky tape. The tulip. To make the tulip, use the pink sheet and fold the square in half. Fold the rectangle in half again. Fold the small square diagonally on the part of the open sides. Reopen the sheet and cut along the four perpendicular folds as in the image, leaving about one centimeter from the center. Glue each square by overlapping the corner on top of the one next to it, up to the median fold. To make the tulip stem, take the green sheet and cut it in half. Divide the first half into two other parts, a smaller one and a larger one. Roll the bigger one tightly, starting from one corner. When you're almost at the end, add glue and finish rolling the sheet so as to close it well. With the other rectangle, let's make the small chalice on which the petals rest. Make a small square, fold it in half, and then in half again, forming a mini triangle. Then draw the shape, as in the image, and cut out along the mark. You will have obtained the base of the flower. With the tip of the pencil, make a small hole in the center and insert the stem into it. Make small cuts and glue the stem to the base so it won't come out. Now you can also glue the tulip on it. To add the leaf, take the remaining green rectangle and draw the outline. Cut it out and give it the right shape, modeling it with a pencil. Now you can glue it. Fabulous! The rose. To make a beautiful rose, take the red sheet and cut a circle out inside it. Make a small cut and now start cutting a spiral, as in the image. Start rolling the strip from the outside and roll, 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 roll until you get to the center. Put a little glue on your base and your magnificent damask rose, the most precious, will be ready. For the stem, proceed as you did with the tulip. If you want to make your roses even more realistic, outline the edges of the leaves. Wow! Enchanting! Now all that's left to make is the lily. Let's start with the stem. Divide the green sheet in half, as you did before for the rose and the tulip. Start rolling up, but this time leaving the top a little more open. In two rectangles, draw the leaves and cut them out. Curl them with the pencil and glue them to the stem. Take two rectangles of lilac and yellow paper, glue them on top of each other, and cut a lot of fringes up to the middle of the sheet. Now roll up the piece of paper and secure it with sticky tape. Have you already guessed? These are the pistols. Take the white sheet of paper and draw the outline of your hand on it. When you've finished cutting it out, we can start composing our lily. Put the pistols down and start sealing the sides of the lily with glue. 
a little more glue on the bottom, squeeze it and ta-da, pop in the stem. Spectacular! Now we can put together our bouquet. Wonderful! Even a lorry would applaud you.